Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Coach McVay Show presented by Microsoft Surface. I'm JB Long with DeMarco Farr and Sean McVay. The Rams coming off their first win, as you are well aware, and off to Chicago for week four this week. Good to see you, Sean. Good Thanks to see for you being guys. Here. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate How are you feeling? It. Feel good. You know, I, um, I was proud of the team. I, I think what was important is that we took a step in the right direction. And and sometimes that can be reflected by getting the result you want. Sometimes it might not be reflected. Uh, but I wanted to see improvement, wanted to see growth, wanted to see us compete to the best of our ability, um, stay in the fight. And mm -hmm. there was there was a lot of things that unfolded in that game where we made it hard on ourselves early. And you don't take away any of the credit San Francisco deserves. They jump out to a 14-0 lead. Um, they had some things that, that they did that, you know, you give them a ton of credit for, but our guys kept battling and I thought there was great examples. I thought special teams came up huge, um, to be able to do some things that, that allowed that, that led to really our first scoring drive offensively, got some stops at the right time defensively. Um, and then we were able to create enough and sustain some drives and get some momentum that ended up leading to the outcome that we wanted. But there was a lot of grit. There was a lot of toughness. There was a lot of fight. Um, and there was definitely some improvement that I saw. And I was, I was really proud of the group. Um, and it was a fun day for them. Going from one week, I mean, you get the W. That's all that matters. You, you won. But to see what you said from going from one week, I, we're going to challenge each other. I need to see the best out of you going to this week. And then you see what you did on, at, in SoFi this weekend. It's got to make you proud, like you said. It, it did. And, and it wasn't perfect either. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of things that we can improve upon. But I think, you know, you emphasize everything, you emphasize nothing, right? So there was a handful of things that we did emphasize that we saw. It helped give us an opportunity to try to come away with the results that you're hunting up. And, and now it's like, okay, how do we continue to do some of those things? And now let's improve some other things and let's continue to build. Um, we were talking about it before we started. You know, I'm, I'm grateful that we came out healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, that hasn't been the case in the first couple weeks. It's been kind of unprecedented. Nonetheless, the season goes on. Mm -hmm. And so how now do we establish some rapport with the guys that are playing? How can we put the work in mm -hmm. that allows for that growth, for that improvement um, that will lead to a process that, that we talk about committing to the daily improvement um, and the standards that we have and, and the rapport that's important, especially at those specific positions. And there's a lot of things that um, that we can improve upon, but there was a lot of cool things that our guys did, and uh, and I was happy and, and I was proud of them. We fully appreciate that you play 17 nameless, faceless opponents, right? Yeah. And each is only worth one. But rivalries also matter yeah. in this sport. It's what makes it special. Yeah. Can you acknowledge that for our city, our fan base, like that? That was really worth something. No, yesterday. it was fun, and and really, you know, that that's a team. I don't know, rivalry, it's a team that you hold in high regard because their body of work over the last handful of years has merited that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're a really well-coached team. I, I, I hold Kyle in the highest of regards. You guys know that. They have great personnel. Uh, John Lynch and Kyle do a great job of acquiring you know, guys that are very similar to the things that we look for in players. Um, and then they do a great job of challenging you and testing you schematically in all three phases. And so um, we know them. They know us, but they do a great job. They're always a really difficult matchup. Um, and for our guys to be able to just kind of, like I said, stay in the fight, find a way to make enough plays to be able to give themselves a chance to come away with the result at the end. Uh, I was really proud of them, but that's a quality team. Um, you know, you know good football, and they've put you know good football on tape consistently year in and year out. And I got a ton of respect for that group. Uh, respect the team, respect the coaches. Love seeing their fans leave. That's fair, right? Love seeing. Them. There's bye. a lot of them there. Oh yeah, but bye. Love it. Uh, how do you guys stay? What do you so think the percentage was of Niners fans to Rams? Uh, let's see, eighty twenty. What do you Rams think? to Niners. There. <laughs> now you're a liar. <laughs> they didn't build the escalators wide enough. No doubt. Yes, sir. But how do you guys stay so cool and cool and calm? You and your quarterback in particular, when it's. It's chaos down there. You know, here's what I would say, DeMarco. I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Not necessarily, you know, about me, but I think he had such a great even keeled demeanor throughout. I thought he let the game come to him. You know, when you are behind two possessions or you're behind 10 points um, as the fourth quarter is going on, I thought he made great decisions. I thought he was in complete control. And even though there weren't as many opportunities to throw the football, I thought he made great decisions. Some of them were great decisions to throw it away. I thought he recognized and read coverage. I thought he you know, made quick decisions and accurate decisions. And, um, and guys believe when he's got that just confidence and that aura about himself. Um, 
but he didn't force anything. You know, that, that to me was why I think everybody kind of knew that, man, there was a lot of reasons to feel like, all right, the, the percentages or the analytics will tell you you're out of that game. But it never really felt that way because of, you know, how steady and even keeled he was. And I, I thought Matthew was in really complete control mm-hmm. and command yesterday. And I thought that um, gave the rest of the team kind of a calm and a steadiness that was needed and, and coaches included. Top 10 in the NFL career uh, completions now for Matthew Stafford. But could I Is make the right? case? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's cool. That would have been <laughs> nice to know before the uh, team meeting where I could have given him some love. Well, I was going to say, was his Artists best. Com- the heck Just bring you, JB in. Was there. his best completion <laughs> post game with the game ball? Oh. Yes, it was. You know what? That was a, he, he ended up bailing his uh, coach out there. I was so excited for so many guys. How could I forget my man Cardi? But I, you know, See, I thought you did it on purpose to let QB1 uh, kind of take the... That's exactly what I yeah. did. <laughs> Very good. Uh, let's go special teams then, because yeah. we're right there. Yeah. Uh, best Whoa. Rams special teams game in, in who knows how long. You want to take us inside the fake punt execution first? Because yeah, I know there's a I lot of guys to compliment you know, there. I think what was big, it was a third down and 12. Tyler Johnson gets six yards. It's a 14 nothing game, JB. And this is something that our guys had worked on. Um, there was a possibility that the look could present itself and thought excellent snap by Alex Ward. And then what a great job when you really look at it. You know, for, I don't know what kind of shots you guys have of it, but, you know, for it to be a great snap to Ronnie. And then you look at the sellout by Nico Kalinich. He secures Conley and then to be able to sell out on Odom on the second level that allows Ronnie to be able to put his foot in the ground. This is just a great job. I mean, that layout right there, and now he levels it off inside of him. I think we got six and a half yards. We needed six, um, and that extended the drive, and that led to Kyron Williams' touchdown reception Mm -hmm. from 15 yards out. But um, true credit to our special teams as a whole. I thought Chase Blackburn, Scott Frost did a great job. This is a great example of practice, performance, equal, and game reality. We had worked this one. Mm-hmm. Um, they had an ownership and an understanding of what the intent was, um, and they executed it in a, in a key moment that we had to have. You know, we, There wasn't a lot of momentum. This gave us some life, and these were one of those plays that you talk about just keeps you in that fight. I thought it was great for what that did in terms of just you know some positive momentum and Huge job by the special teams. I, I was really proud of them yesterday. Something about teams, when you, hit, when you hit a big play, it lifts the entire team. Maybe it's because it's offense and defense working together. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, and, and really, we needed that. I think we've been at our best when we're playing complimentary football. Mm-hmm. And so you end up getting this fake punt conversion to basically steal a possession. And what does it lead to? Like, if you end up having to punt it back or you don't come away with points, then it's kind of all for naught, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but it led to a touchdown. So now it's a 14-7 game. And so um, this was big. Obviously, Xavier Smith's return was so huge. So happy for him, the work that he's put in to be able to deliver in a crunch time moment. Uh, I thought it was really smart by Omar Spates not to block in the back. Mm. You know, as a young player to make a good decision at the point of, and really at the moment of truth, Jalen McCullough goals next level to be able to get that wall set up. Um, and then for that to lead to us being in, you know, right around the 50-yard line, um, you know, with, you know, a, a little bit under a minute left. That, mm-hmm. that, that was big where you don't feel like you're really having the press and get a chance to be able to end the game in regulation, which our guys did. How much did Cardi kick last week out here on the practice field? He just kicked one time. You know, on Friday he kicked, went eight for eight, um, and he was perfect in the game. So uh, uh, we weren't sure until Friday. I remember talking to him even on Friday. What do you think? He's like, you know, I won't know until I kick. Uh, but he had a good look in his eye. And then as soon as he did... Uh, you know, Chase felt good about it. He felt good about it. Had a really good warm up, and um, and he delivered in a big way. But Tanner Brown would have been ready to roll if needed. Another flat line guy. After the game, I said, "Great job," and he said, "For what?" Yeah, yeah, uh, kicking the game winning field goal. You know what I like about him too, Demarco, is if you look at where he's hitting his kicks. I think this is a big factor. You know, the consistency at where it goes through mm-hmm. the uprights. Obviously, as long as it goes in between those, it counts all the same, right? But I think when you talk about, it's like a golfer. How much can you repeat that stroke? How much can you consistently place the ball where you want? Most of his kicks are going to be good uh, from uprights, you know, about this wide. Yeah. And um, and that to me is, he's got a nice repeated stroke. 
I think our operation has been better. I think you look at Alex mm. Ward, you look at Ethan Evans, both of those guys in their second year as pros, you know, everybody just wants to look at the kicker. It's snap, hold, kick. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought our protection was good as well versus a tough rush outfit as a field goal block unit from the Niners. Not these golfers, I'll say that much. <laughs> uh, and you uh, told the media that uh, Xavier Smith's going to be your guy, punt return moving he forward? Yeah, he'll be the punt returner. Um, you know, semantically, you know, how does that work out in terms of the roster mechanics? You know, we'll figure that out as we go. But um, he, he did a great job. I was happy for X. Did you return punts back in the day, high school? Uh, yeah, I mean, if I needed to. But uh, yeah, yeah. Earn some extra reps. You never know. There Big you one. Get right. you another one. Well, while we're on your yeah. athletic days, yeah. how long would you be on injured reserve if you tried what Kyron did somersaulting <laughs> into the end zone yesterday? I would have stuck the landing. I would have stuck the landing right come there. On. What do you mean, come on, man? I'm, I'm in great He shape. scored. <laughs> it was awesome. No, yeah. hey, Kyron, I'll tell you what, that was a cool play because yeah. – Warner has played as good as, you know, he's always been a, as good as it gets at the position. I think he's playing as well as he's ever played. Uh, for Matthew to be able to kind of hold him based on what coverage they were in when he's kind of visual, uh, for Kyron to be able to win inside on Campbell and then to be able to have the presence, to, you know, front pad throw before Warner could get over there in a quarters contour and, and then to be able to finish, it was swaggy. I think Kyron was pissed he didn't stick the landing, but he did a great job. He certainly came to life in the red area uh, like he seemingly always does. He don't back down, man. No, I mean, he's tough as hell. I, I mean, love that he flipped over that one safety that they were yeah. going at it, but he won't back down from that sort of game. No, he's he's so tough, you know, and I think he um, he had a bunch of big time plays. Mm -hmm. He's a stud. Love his energy. I thought he was great yesterday. Tied your guy Marshall Falk for a uh, franchise record six straight games with a rushing touchdown, sixteen rushing scores in the last fifteen games. Is that for, right? Uh, That's Kyron cool. Williams. Good for yeah. him. Any thought uh, to go for two after his third? Uh, if we had been, if it had been less time on the clock, then then you would have thought about it. But didn't want them to be in four downs. Um, if we had ended up converting that, um, mm. but if it was like you know with like 15 seconds left, then the mm. answer is probably yes. Uh, but based on the time that we scored with. Um, that wasn't something that we were thinking. We've talked a lot about Jordan Whittington stepping into some vacant cleats, uh, yeah. and they're big ones. But how about what he did competing on your run surface yesterday, including on at least one of those Kyron touchdowns? Yeah, it was big. You know, he, he's got a great way about himself. He's physical. I mean, he had some key blocks at the point of attack, caught a you know big in-breaking route, obviously caught the screen, caught a, you know the, another flat pass where – um, he just does a good job. You know, he's, he's got a great game day demeanor, and you could feel that from the very first preseason game. But he is physical at the point of attack. He likes that. You could see he got so excited for Kyron after he ends up springing that block that he makes on Brown um, when they were in a man coverage and we were in a one-by-three and he kind of motions across right before the snap. Um, he's a stud. I, I really like him. He's, he's all about the right kind of stuff. He's one of our kind of guys. I, I'm a 2-2 two -two fan, I have to tell you that. Yeah. I, I don't know why. Uh, maybe, it's because he's under, why. I, maybe it's because he's undersized, but I just love to watch this dude play, yeah. and it seems like when he sets those routes up, he can run by just about anybody. Yeah, he's got an effort, effortless gait, too. I mean, I think when you watch him, when he makes the deep catch um, on one of the premier players in this league, he's kind of got an effortless gait where it doesn't look like he's working as hard as he is, but he's covering ground because he's got that stride length. His upper body stays quiet. Thought that was a great track that he had. And then he had a couple good, you know, big time third down conversions for us as well. Let's take a closer look at one of them. Second yeah. quarter, third and eight from your own 25. The way you got him a free release here was awesome. Yeah, this is cool. He's coming on in a little short motion from outside in. Um, they, they were in a man coverage right here. I thought he did a great job of straightening <laughs> Yidam up just a little bit. And then as he broke, you know, if you go back even just a tick, you know, you can really see right before you know unbelievable job by matthew to be able to speed it up but to be able to get vertical to put his foot in the ground Bam. and then to make this catch away from your frame um really impressive you know it, this might have been his second best catch on the third down conversions that he had because the one on the shallow was unbelievable where he basically caught it a couple times but you know matthew's ability to speed this up this is a really cool angle you see as soon as matthew's back foot hits he oh. ends up throwing this without a hitch changes his arm slot um, perfect location. It's great that Tutu has his mouthpiece in too, right? You know? <laughs> so that uh, you know he's, he's really uh, you know it's really doing a lot for him. But uh, great catch, big conversion right there. This was on the same drive that we ended up having the fake punt, but at least got us some space, got an explosive. 
Tutu had a big day, um, and this was this was an awesome play. Really cool connection by Ian Matthew. Great job by Ronnie Rivers stepping up on Fred Warner in the B gap too on the left side right there. I've heard you mention this previously, but it's it's borne out in the statistics. In fact, there's a site NFLPenalties.com that keeps track of like the hidden PI yardage. Yeah. Tutu was tops in the league in a per game average last year in PI. Uh, tied for second in total penalty yards generated last year, and he picks up right where he left off. Is that off. right? He's in like Calvin Ridley company. No kidding. Yeah. What's Bring that? him Is into that? your meeting. <laughs> like PI yards, yeah. either like on a per game or a per target basis. Sure. Like even though Tutu's usage rate hasn't been that high, yeah. his impact in those hidden areas has been really consequential. That's big. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like that's why I don't get too caught up in stats, right? Mm -hmm. Because – you look at whether it's the 48-yard PI. Well, what does that happen for us in terms of if our job is to move the ball and score points? Mm -hmm. I, I don't care what yardage all that stuff says, but that's a 48-yard gain it's for our offense. That might not go down in the, the, the stats and the total yards, but uh, and I know he probably would like that to be you know on his <laughs> stats, but like we recognize that stuff in a team meeting because sure. that's super important. Like, hey, I, hey, that's a 48-yard gain for our offense. It might not go down officially, but last time I checked, where that ball is placed is 48 yards further than where it was on the previous snap. Same thing with Colby Parkinson's PI mm -hmm. that he draws on Devondre Campbell. Um, we had a lot of hidden yardage, you know, that might be hidden on the stats. They weren't in terms of where it mm -hmm. uh, allowed us to matriculate the ball down the field on some of those scoring drives, DeMarco. Close with Parkinson. Uh, he is a matchup problem with yeah, his size. Yeah, yeah, he does a good job. I think he's a complete tight end, mm -hmm. too. Uh, Nick Cayley, man, he, he, if you guys go back and watch, you see somebody having fun that was excited when he ended up uh, drawing that P.I. right there. That guy loves football. He gets so juiced for his guys and really for our team in general. But uh, Colby had a good day, had some major contributions, big third down conversion that he had, and um, was really productive in the run game as well. It's not just as simple as putting a second tight end on the field, right? Mm. You made it look easy, but it's more than that. Well, Hunter Long did a great job. You know, mm. he played a handful of snaps. Um, you know, Cayley... Uh, our coaches, you know, Mike LaFleur, Ryan Wendell, all those guys really, you know, they did a great job, you know, having some different variety uh, based on our circumstances. And, and our job is to ma maximize the, the players that we have. I thought it was really cool to be able to see some guys step up um, and deliver. And, and now let's see if we can really build on it like we've talked about. See, I'm still thinking of that, that whip. See, I get stuck on offense. Defense, uh, I thought Byron Young took another step forward. I Ron did Entas. too. Yeah, yeah he, he really made his impact felt. I thought he was productive in the run, um, obviously, even as his own dropper, you know, where he makes that play when we rush three early on in the game on Jennings on kind of that delayed slant that Purdy checked it down to him. It was a great job, you know, breaking visual on the ball, getting his head out of the tackle. Um, and then at the end of the half, to prevent them from getting any points on the sack fumble, that was huge. Uh, he was a game ball recipient on the defensive side. Uh, Joe Caniglio does a really good job with that group. B.Y. is so conscientious, and he's so tough, um, so coachable. And I thought a lot of the things that had been emphasized in terms of, all right, here's where we take a step forward. Uh, that practice preparation, that practice performance led to game reality for him yesterday. Uh, I was happy for and him. And that sack was nasty. Was Why don't nice. we re replay that, see? He did a great job. I mean, he won with his hands, <laughs> yeah. and then to be able to close and then attack the football and then fist to get the recovery – pretty good illustration for see, you there there huh? you go yeah, see like, you understand like <laughs> position value and restricted resources in this league what if you have not one but two mm. great edge rushers on rookie deals what can that mean for the rams right now but also in this window of time yeah it's big i mean especially when you look at it, and you mentioned it jb you know where are these high value positions that usually you have to use high draft capital or if you acquire them through trades or free agency these guys are making a bunch of money and so how do you continuously build your team up um and that's that's a big deal i thought jared verse you know did some really good mm -hmm. things yesterday i thought michael hoyt was really steady too i thought he had a great energy great demeanor all three of those guys played you know around the same sort of snaps and i think they all have nice complementary skill sets but but by was a guy in particular that stood out in terms of taking a step in the right direction thought michael hoyt was really mm -hmm. productive um, and then Jared Verse, you know, he's he's violent. You feel his presence. He's only going to get better, very disruptive, and then continuing to to learn from the opportunities where it's like, okay, where are your play ops based on this call? And um, he's he's real coachable. He's a stud. He pursues 
like a banshee. Love that. I he love does. the stuff off Did the edge. Did you pursue like a banshee? No, man. I took two steps and stopped. No, you did <laughs> Come I, on. I know Coach Vermeil would have lost. I had no did. choice. You played hard. I know you did. A couple of explosives got away, yeah. but you sewed it up and you got better as you went Yeah, on. you know, I, I think there's definitely like, you know, especially, you know, being able to shore up the mm -hmm. way that we were hitting blocks, playing the run. You know, Purdy had 42 yards that were... You know, a great job by him, but mm -hmm. we've got to corral these running quarterbacks a little bit better. Yeah, not, not a little, a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, but I did think for a great running team like the Niners are in terms of their design runs, uh, we did a fairly good job. They, they create a lot of conflict. They do as good a job as anybody schematically. Um, they had been really productive running the football, um, and we were able to to limit it. I mean, mm -hmm. we didn't certainly stop it, but I thought we had some critical stops. I thought the red zone sequence where it was a second and two, mm -hmm. and then we ended up you know, going to third and one, and then we end up doing a good job of taking a negative that forces them to kick a field goal to go up 24-14 instead of possibly 28-14. That was key. I'm sure there's a statuesque quarterback on your schedule waiting somewhere. It's just not going to be this week. <laughs> no, either. it will not be. be. <laughs> no, this guy's... Uh, uh, He's a problem. He was, he was a top pick for a reason. More on him in just a second, but can I ask, like, what is a fair evaluation of where your secondary is? And particularly Trey White, who I've heard you say, like, he's not someone that you are willing to bet against. Yeah, I thought he did a good job. You know, he had a big-time third and four stop for us. <laughs> he competes really hard. He did a good job coming up in some run support situations. Um, you know, a guy that knows how to play this game, has a lot of experience. I thought uh, I thought he took a step in the right direction. I yeah, I'm not going to say what I thought of the one that was called on the second drive, you know, but he's competitive. He's doing he's doing a really good job right there. You want me to say it for you? Uh, yeah. The, the penalty disparity was 7-2 at one point, I noted. <laughs> uh, there was, I thought, a real issue with Hufunga's late hit on Kyron. Oh, that was a uh, miss. There was another face mask in the mix. But I'll tell you what, they picked up the one that mattered yeah, at the end. They did. They picked up the one that mattered that at the up. end. I was glad they picked that one up. That definitely was not a personal foul there. Um, and so, you know, I, I thought Trey mm -hmm. White took a positive step. I, I really did. I think the Kobe Durant's done an excellent job working through some things. Um, obviously, Cam Curl and Quentin Lake have been productive. And then I think it was a good opportunity. Cam Kitchens, you know, uh, played the most, you know, he played a handful of snaps in, in some of our sub situations, some good stuff and some things that we can learn on, for, um, you know, with him. But he's the kind of guy that's wired to be able to do right and, and use it uh, as growth opportunities moving forward. On to Chicago? Yeah. In September. Uh, Yay. That, that's a fact. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. I, I, we've been there late in the years, but this is um, – it's always – Chicago is a great football city. be a great opportunity. I want to see us have a great week of preparation, and uh, I'll look forward to getting started on that once we finish up here. But you know their personnel in terms of Shane's there, Thomas Brown is mm -hmm. there, right? So some familiar faces on their sideline. Yeah, you know, and, and really good coaches that were outstanding contributors, you know, to our group here. Um, and so we, we've got our work cut out for us, as you do every week in this uh, in this league. And it's what you love about it, and that's what can also drive you crazy. You got one, um, but I'm sure you've seen Caleb Williams' tape. Impressive in college, yeah. and pretty good in the pro so far. Yeah, he uh, he is he is he's a dynamic athlete. He he can beat you in a variety of ways. And so, like I said, we've got our mm -hmm. work cut out for us, and they've got excellent skill around him. And so uh, it's going to be a great challenge. Congratulations on a win in the home opener. Next Thanks, time guys. you're home, the clock operator is going to run all those seconds. If they have to oh. put some back on at the end, so yeah. be it. But the referees are going to be in charge <laughs> of that seconds. from now on. That was a long two seconds. <laughs> that was not? a quick kick. Anything less than a minute, <laughs> I mean, it's all coming thing, off. When that play was extended, what were you guys thinking? Oh, my God, no. <laughs> I, I was please like, Please no face mask. Please no right? defensive yeah. penalties, what I was thinking. Why would you say that? <laughs> <laughs> Just glad, it, glad it's over. Yes, sir. Victory Monday. For Sean McVay, for DeMarco Farr, I'm JB Long. Looking ahead to week four and a trip to the Windy City. Looking forward to seeing you or talking to you then. This is the Coach McVay Show presented by Microsoft Surface. Mm -hmm.